So you're in the market for a new phone, but you don't want to spend more than $400. And because life is already complicated enough, you want a simple and clean experience without a heavily customized user interface. At this price point, that leaves two choices, Google's Pixel 4a or the iPhone SE 2020. And in this video, I explain what led me to buy my first ever iPhone and why after two months of using it, I think the iPhone SE 2020 is the only mid-range phone you need in 2021. Hello campers and welcome back to the channel. I'm gonna tell you straight up that I'm not a very phone orientated person, so I don't want to spend a lot of money on a phone. And I never thought that I would own an iPhone, not because of any ideological hate for Apple, but because of price. Especially as I might drop it when I'm a bit tipsy on a Saturday night, or other time of day, or it accidentally slips from my hand down the toilet. But in April last year, Apple released the iPhone SE 2020. And it's basically an updated iPhone 8 with an updated camera and Apple's latest processor. So I decided to ditch my aging Android handset and I bought the SE 2020 a couple of months ago. So just for a little bit of context, I was coming from the Nokia 7 Plus, which runs Android, and it costs a couple of hundred dollars less than the SE 2020. But it was fairly slow and sluggish if you needed to run anything more than, you know, a few browser tabs open at any one time or big applications like Instagram and Facebook. And I know this can be a problem with a budget and mid-range Android phones. So it's one of the reasons that I wanted to move over to the iPhone and it really has lived up to my expectations. So the SE 2020 is really responsive because of the Apple A13 Bionic hexa-core processor. It never slows down regardless of how many applications you have open. This thing is fast and fluid regardless of what you're doing with it. I know this is not something that everybody would need to do, but it can edit 4K video without breaking a sweat. And even my notebook here struggles with 4K video and editing 4K video with the SE 2020 is really impressive. And while I've never picked up the Google Pixel 4a, I suspected that probably that it just wouldn't be as fast and responsive as the SE 2020. But the deciding factor was a video that I saw from Marcus Brownlee, who is one of the biggest tech YouTubers in the world, and I trust his opinion. And he basically confirmed what I was thinking, that the Pixel 4a just cannot outperform the SE 2020. One of the nice things about iOS is all of the attention to detail, something that you don't get in the stock build of Android, which you get on the Pixel 4a. So just little things like when you set the timer, you get the countdown displayed on the lock screen. So I don't have to unlock the phone to see how much time is left. And this little attention to detail in the UI, all of the polish, which really helps to improve the user experience. And of course, because it's Apple, it's simple, it's beautiful, and of course here on this channel we're all about keeping tech as simple as possible. Of course that means that you can't do a lot of customization. You can set the desktop background, and that is pretty much it. There's not a lot of customization in this thing. Of course you can arrange the icons on the screen as you want. Apart from that, there's not much more that you can do with it. And you know what? I just don't care. The less customization that's possible, to be honest, the better as far as I'm concerned. So the camera is something that of course doesn't quite match the quality of the Pixel 4a. There are devices in this price range with a better camera but I would say if you're looking at taking video then it takes full HD so that's 1080p and 4k video and the quality is absolutely stunning. I think any other phone at this price range cannot beat the SE 2020 for video. Again the screen is not the best in the price range but what's really important from my point of view is that it's color accurate because a lot of the cheaper and mid-range Android phones don't have very color accurate displays. Maybe they're too cold, they're too warm and because I'm doing a lot of work with YouTube and images I want my phone to be color accurate so that it gets something that really looks natural and Apple have got that spot 
on with this phone. And because this is an Apple phone and Apple tend to update their phones with the latest version of iOS, maybe not forever, but for a very long period of time, much more than the two years that Android tends to update the Android One phones, you're gonna get a lot of longevity out of this phone, assuming that after two years, the battery is still gonna hold up. Because of the very powerful processor, this phone is still gonna be something that performs really well two, three, maybe even four years into the future. So of course, every phone is a compromise. So I just want to list a couple of caveats. So I mentioned the battery. Now, there's a lot of reviews on the internet saying that this thing can't last a whole day. I would say that's absolutely not true with moderate usage this thing lasts the whole day without any problems but of course it's a small and light phone so the battery capacity is relatively small so if you're the kind of person who's going to be sitting on their phone the whole day then the battery probably isn't going to hold up and you need to go and carry it around with you a battery pack it's worth understanding about the SE 2020 that it is dual sim but the second sim is an eSIM and it only supports data and the other problem with eSIMs is that not all mobile providers support them. So if you need a dual SIM phone that accepts two physical SIM cards, then the iPhone is definitely not for you. And another thing that you should be aware of that it doesn't come with a charger. So if you want the fast charger, then you're going to have to shell out another $20, $30 for that accessory. The SE 2020 is a fast, simple and beautiful phone that you can't really go wrong with. I'm not saying that the Pixel 4a or the 5 are bad phones. Of course they're not. But if you want to keep life simple and you don't want some of the performance headaches that come with the Pixel 4a, or you don't want to spend considerably more than $400, then the SE 2020 could be the phone for you. And there's no need to go all in on the Apple ecosystem. So sure, you will need an Apple ID to be able to use the phone. But apart from that, I don't use any other Apple services. If you'd like to buy the iPhone SE 2020, I've put some Amazon links in the description below. They help me with a small commission when you buy something from Amazon using the link, but there's no extra cost to you. And if you'd like to find out more about how to configure the eSIM on the SE 2020, then you should watch the video on the screen next. And I'll see you next time.